planning your trip to London? I'm sure you'll have the following on your to-do list. Westminster Abbey? Check. Changing of the guard? Check. Hearing Big Ben bomb? Check. Then there are the other musts. Taking a London cab? Spending an afternoon at the pub? Hearing an authentic Cockney accent? Yes, the accent is Cockney. But do you realize, with all these things, you've only experienced this much of what this city has to offer? So, let's see what your London to-do list would look like if it had a page two. in England right now in Barclay Square. Remember that song a nightingale sang in Barclay Square? Well, this is the park, and it is just so beautiful. Anyway, uh, there are two publications that have been invaluable to me. Uh, one is the London A to Z. This is a book of maps of every area in London in every single street. If you've ever seen a map of London, here I'll show you one page, it looks like a bowl of spaghetti. So you really need a good map. Good thing to have. The other one is Time Out London. This is a listings magazine. It comes out every week, and it has just about everything that's going on in the city at the time. And there are also some really spot-on reviews, so you get a good opinion, you know, whether something's uh, good or it's just hype. So these are two fabulous things to have with you. All right, let's go. subway in London is called the Underground. It's also known as the Tube, but it's the quickest way around the city. I'm sure a lot of Londoners right now are going, ha! Ah! Okay, provided there are no delays or uh, power outages. Subways are always crazy, daunting places, and you feel like you're the only one who doesn't know exactly what's going on. I've really found the Underground to be very user-friendly. It's like they know your pain and they're there to help. But why don't we first take a look at the map just so we understand where we are and what we're doing. So here is a map of the tube. See the map? And there are about 12 different lines. Each one has its own color. And where am I? I'm right here at Green Park on the dark blue line. And I can follow that down here to the key and see that I am on the Piccadilly line. And also something that I need to know is uh, where I'm traveling to. Because if you see, there are different zones. Zone one, zone two, goes out to six. Different zones mean different prices. Okay, so I know where I am. I know where I'm going. Now I gotta buy a ticket. The Underground actually has staff on hand to specifically help visitors get around. Anyone in a blue shirt can answer your questions. Anyone looking for single tickets, one-day cards? Do you have any questions? Yes. <laughs> I do have a question about the one-day cards. Yes. Uh, what, what is that? Right, a one-day travel card means you can travel anywhere within zones one and two. Okay. Or a set price, you can use it all day, buses, tubes and trains. Thank you so much, I appreciate You're it. Welcome. Have a nice day. You too. Rest assured that if you make a mistake, you can transfer at any station without paying another fare. Couches. How luxurious. The place that I want to visit is one of London's newest, and my stop is Waterloo Station on the south bank of the Thames. This is an attraction that has become an instant classic, the London Eye. It was built for the Millennium Celebration, only supposed to be up for five years, but people loved it so much that now it will go round and round indefinitely. The British Airways London Eye is the largest observation wheel ever built. Tickets start around $15 for adults, $7 for children. Now, to avoid long lines, you can purchase tickets in advance online and then pick them up at the ticket booth. The rotation is slow and gentle. It takes a full 30 minutes, so you have plenty of time to take in the most spectacular views of London. Did you know that you could actually reserve your own private capsule for a cocktail party or, hint, hint, marriage proposal? The London Eye runs from 9.30 a.m. to as late as 10 p.m., and a nighttime flight is purely magical. From up here, you have a good idea of what our location is, which is on the south bank of the Thames. Very few visitors uh, used to come over to this side, opting for the other side, and for good reasons. You look over there and you see Parliament, the Clock Tower, Buckingham Palace, but now people are coming over here in droves because of things like the London Eye. And this entire area on the south bank is in development to be one of the cultural destinations of the world. So make sure you have an up-to-date tour guide so you can best explore it. You know? No doubt this
this will be mentioned in your travel guide. This is Leicester Square, sort of a main meeting place for people all around the world, travelers, tourists. It's also an entertainment district here, mega movie complexes, big restaurants. It's like the suburban mall gone crazy in an urban environment. London is a very expensive city. You've got to save money however you can, and a great place to do that is here at Leicester Square. They've got a TKTS booth. Now, this is how you can save up to half-off theater tickets. So theater's very big in London. And once you've gotten your tickets, it's only a few blocks to London's main theater district. New York has Broadway. London has the West End. At any given point during the year, you can see here incredible theater from big, splashy musicals to a nice, straight play. Uh, you'll want to walk along Shaftesbury Avenue. That's where all the theaters are. Check out the big billboards and see what TV and movie stars are here in London, proving they are not just celebrities, but thespians. And if that weren't enough, just a short walk from here is the Times Square of London. We've now made it to Piccadilly Circus, along with everyone else in the world. Now, a circus here means circle, so don't come here expecting any animal acts. There is, however, quite a carnival-like atmosphere. Uh, this place exists for tourism, big neon signs, swirling traffic, just seems to bring people out in droves. And I, I gotta say, I just, uh, I, I just don't like places like this. It's too chaotic, it smells of exhaust, and I feel like my purse is gonna be snatched, but that's, that's just my opinion. And if you look around, people are really having, they're really having a great time. You know, you're caught up in the vitality and spectacle of being in one of the best cities in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. Next, what's inside this giant beanie? Only the most famous people in the world. Passport to Europe will return. The British are notorious for being polite, and here's a good example. You know how they drive on the opposite side of the road here? Well, that can be confusing, if not downright dangerous. And on most of the intersections, they have written where to look for traffic. Look at this. Look left, and over there is look right. But what's funny is you look left, but something in the back of your head just wants, you just want to look your own way. So you look left, quick right, left, go. One of the most popular attractions in London is Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. If you don't believe me, this is the line. It's about an hour and a half long right now. And to get in, it costs 22 pounds, which is almost $40. But how's this for marketing? If you want to get in right now, no line, you can pay 25 pounds. I'm just thinking, man, this better be good. museum more fabulous cocktail party i feel like i'm one of those entertainment reporters you know live at the after hours party at the oscars every star is here anyone who is anyone in hollywood is having a great time right here look there's hugh grant sucking down all the free champagne he can get his hands on yes there's no doubt you will never be in a room with this many celebrities at one time so we'll pay to see them in wax there's the divas now check out the leading men It's a true honor to have yourself represented in wax. The famous sit for the artists anywhere from 10 minutes to 4 hours. How do you get to be a wax figure? It's the people's choice. As a visitor, you can fill out a form of whom you would most like to see. Here at Madame Tussauds, you can actually pretend that you were the fifth beetle. <laughs> Some good tips to know when visiting Madame Tussauds. There are family passes that take the bite out of the admission price. And if you want to beat the lines, rally up a group of six or more, and then you'll be able to go into the group entrance with hardly a wait. A word of caution, don't stand still for too long. I'm staying in a part of London known as Mayfair. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Well, it is. Uh, Mayfair is an elegant area, made even more so by its close proximity to Green Park. Mayfair is also where my hotel is, the Athenaeum. And I chose this hotel because, one, it's close to an underground station, so in the morning I can zip off anywhere, and two, it's overlooking the park. And I do love an evening stroll. So let's go check it out. The lobby has just the right balance of comfort and swankiness. The rooms here have a, a nice blend of the two as well. When booking any hotel in London, make sure that the price quoted includes their sales and service tax. It's called a VAT, and it's 17.5%. Pretty hefty. Uh, now let me show you where I'm staying, which is at the Athenaeum, but not in one of its rooms or suites. 
I'm staying literally around the corner from the main hotel building. I have always wanted to live in London. It's been one of my dreams to have an apartment or a flat, as they are called. Well, here at the Athenaeum, not only do they have rooms, but they also offer apartments. So if only for a few days, I get to finally feel like I live in London. Can't you see my flat? Now, of course, I couldn't stay in just any old flat. And I think if Austin Powers had a more conservative brother, this would be his pad. Sort of a, a cross between 1960s swing in London uh, and the new millennium. The bedroom is equally fascinating. Look at that modern chandelier. That is just fabulous. But this may not be your cup of tea and just know that most of the apartments are more traditional. Also, know that when you stay in the apartments, you get all the luxury amenities of staying at the hotel, like housekeeping, room service, and of course, the spa. Yeah, baby! London is a very complex city. You know, its name implies that it's one entity when actually it's an amalgam of many different neighborhoods that once were their own separate and distinct villages. So aside from just seeing the top attractions here, it's really important to come out and explore one of the neighborhoods. Just feel what it's like to be a Londoner. Right now I'm in Notting Hill, an area of London we all know because of the movie of the same name. Notting Hill is known for its trendiness. Lots of of-the-moment restaurants and shops selling the wares of up-and-coming designers. Every Saturday, this is the place for one of London's most popular street markets called Portobello Road because it takes place on Portobello Road. Portobello Road is lined with shops that seem to be filled with things you could never find back where you're from, so it's great for that. Also, every Saturday, this becomes one of London's most popular open-air markets, and it's just lined with vendors selling uh, vintage clothing to antiques to just basic bric-a-brac. Four a pound, organic bananas. Five for a pound, giant pizza. Now, the biggest problem I have as a tourist, and I don't mind saying this, is uh, I worry about when the next bathroom is going to come along. Now, all over London, they have toilets. It's so great. It's very friendly. Now you do pay, but again, I don't mind. Got a clean toilet. Put the pens in. All right. Now let's see what happens. Oh, the door's opening. Very exciting. A lot of drama. And let's see. Ah, that's nice. Now apparently, once the door closes, I'm going to do some stuff. Then when I come out, the door closes again. That toilet goes back in, gets completely washed, comes back down, fresh full. So again, thank you, London. All right. Now how do I close this? Oh. <laughs> When I come out, I'll take you to a modern museum where you can drink the exhibits. Passport to your returns to London after this. I've said it before, but it's worth repeating. London is a really expensive city, and as soon as you get here, you're going to see how you can cut some corners. I found a great place to eat here in London. It's their fast food. It's good food. So come in here. Let me show you what I mean. This is a tiffin box, a metallic three-tiered container that Indian laborers have packed with their lunches for hundreds of years. And this is the modern equivalent at Tiffin Bites, one of the most popular new food franchises in Great Britain. Indian cuisine is widely regarded as Britain's most popular food, and at these shops, you make your choice from the shelves, you take it to the counter, and they'll heat it up for you, and serve it with freshly baked Indian bread. Jamal Harani co-founded Tiffin Bites. So we're going to start with some Indian appetizers. I love your bread. I see that it's cooked in the traditional tandoori oven. Yeah, we, we have a tandoori oven in all our shops, and, uh, and the way bread is actually cooked is great when it comes out of the oven fresh. <laughs> and uh, it goes into our oven, and it comes out within 60 seconds, beautifully cut out, and then it's great with a cup of chai. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's lovely. But let's talk about uh, like the chicken tikka. I think that's so interesting. Yeah, this is a chicken tikka This here. is it? Yeah. This is the national dish of Great Britain. What it? makes it the national Well, I think it's because um, uh, the Indian culture has been established here now for the last 30 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and most um, uh, people in Britain actually have a friend who's Indian, who mm -hmm. live next door to an Indian family, or have kids going to school uh, who are Indian. And, you know, the culture has really kind of grown up together. And there's close to 11,000 Indian restaurants in the UK. 11,000. Correct. And it's very traditional to um, go out the pub culture, to go out for a few drinks, and then you really want something that's going to wake your senses up when you go to an Indian restaurant. <laughs> And traditionally, then people order a chicken tikka masala. Right. Would you like to have a taste? Yeah. What do I do? Okay. Use the rice as your base, mm -hmm. and then take a little bit out and, uh, and mix it in. Oh, that's excellent. And you can see it's not very hot. It's all mm -hmm. about taste, and you can taste the different flavors. Exactly. That's wonderful. And I'm not even drunk, and I like it. So <laughs> well, that's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.
Now we're heading over to the other side of the Thames to two areas known as South Bank and Bank Side. This is the Millennium Bridge, a strikingly modern pedestrian-only structure that was built to bridge the gap between old and new London. On this side of the Thames, you'll discover a, a different side to the city. Gone is the regal architecture of classic London. Here you're going to find warehouses and industrial buildings that instead of being destroyed for future development, were revitalized. It's sort of the city version of use what your mama gave you. One of the most impressive renewals is the Tate Modern. This building used to be a former power station. Now it's a critically acclaimed museum for 21st century art. Entrance into the museum is free to see its permanent collection. However, the exhibits are going to cost you. Right now, Edward Hopper's here. The last time I was in London, it was Andy Warhol. So you definitely want to see what artist is in town at the Tate Modern. You don't associate London, and all of the United Kingdom for that matter, with wine. There are no major growing regions in this country. So you wouldn't come to London to experience wine until now. This is Vinopolis. It's a wine museum that offers ample tastings, but be careful how much you drink because right next door there is a prison museum. Vinopolis, which translates as City of Wine, invites visitors to take an interactive tour of the history and geography of wines and winemaking. You also get to expand your knowledge of the subject at the many tasting tables throughout Vinopolis. Tom Forrest is the manager. So this first room really looks at the origins of wine, where the vine was first cultivated. And we've got some artifacts here which date back to, in this case, 1800 BC. Oh we reckon about 8,000 years man has been having the odd glass of wine and enjoying himself. This is one of our tasting tables. And I see that the tastings are all broken up into areas. We've got all Portugal, England. Yeah. I, I never knew they even existed, really. It's a fairly fledgling industry. It's only mm -hmm. been going for about 50 years mm -hmm. in its modern fashion. But uh, okay. I think this is an, ex an exciting example of what we can do in this country. Absolutely. We just don't make enough to export, but hey, it's that good, I'm not sharing it with anybody. <laughs> So, uh, how would you fancy a little scoot around Italy? Oh my gosh! Get you one of Vespa. <laughs> That's adorable! Or we'll take you around one of, the, one of the Italian wine regions. What a great idea! Why don't you drive and I'll get on the back. Okay. So I can enjoy my wine. And this is so Italian, don't you think, Tom? It, it is. It is. We try, we try to be passionate <laughs> and Italian about everything. So what are we looking at? Here we're sort of heading down through Tuscany. And just to give you an idea of what the vineyards look like, it gives you a feeling of being there. I need to feel the wind in between my hair, though. I can fan a little bit if that's any help, as near as I can get. <laughs> I'm on top of the Oxo Tower where there is a lovely uh, rooftop restaurant, bar and brasserie and a public viewing gallery from which you can gaze lovingly at the other side of the Thames. And you know, it's so exciting when a city is rediscovering an important part of itself. Uh, London is one of the few cities that has a firm grasp and fierce pride in its history and its traditions and yet constantly of the moment and looking towards its future. There should be no doubt why this is one of the best cities in the world. Would you like to know more about Europe? Well, then turn on your computer and log on to Travel Channel at Discovery.com. There you can learn more information about Europe, see my pictures, my journals, and you can even talk about the show.